All right, everyone, welcome back to that time of week where we take a look at the overall market, see what happened this week, try to get some clues on potentially what could happen in the next week, which is another shortened week. For those who don't know, Monday is off. And as always, Stats Edge Pro members are going to get 30 algorithmically picked stocks with entry, exit criteria all sent to them. Um, so if you're interested in, in that, come on over to statsedgetrading.com, sign up for Stats Edge Pro. Uh, that's what we do over there. It's been a great week for that. We had a couple really, really good trend continuation. We had a couple really good pullback plays. Nothing from the mean reversion algorithm, I don't think. But the other ones were doing very well. Makes sense. The market's up this much. We didn't get anything from the mean reversion side. Let's just pop into it and let's just jump into right here. So this is the overall heat map. This is just showing us what we are doing this week when it comes to the individual names. Uh, you know, if I just move a little bit this side right here, you can see Bitcoin mining and block, which is just a kind of data sharing data center ETF that was on the top. If we look at what's on the bottom on the upside, we had wheat and DVC. These are commodities. So tech up commodities kind of up, but not up nearly as much. And then we had some names down here when it came to UNG boat, some names to the downside, but most things were green. So very, very good week. Uh, if we take a look here, and we go into just Bitcoin to get started, you can see Bitcoin really, really surging. So this is why I said I think the theme is going to be taking a look at bear traps, because look at what happened this week, we undercut this nice range that we've been putting in for a long period of time and then just rocket it. So this could have sucked in a bunch of shorts. It could have got stopped out a bunch of longs and then reverse and just start to rip higher. I'm gonna do a whole video about this Monday. While everyone else is resting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little video uh, either Monday or Tuesday on this, just so you guys kind of understand what a bear trap is. If you don't know what it is, then uh, we'll figure it all out there. I think it would be a pretty good lesson. Getting really close to the highs here, which are about 108, 109. I don't really, I wouldn't be shocked if we got to the highs. We had a bear trap here. We put in a bull trap here. We reverse back down. We just kind of mess everybody up. Wouldn't surprise me one way or another. That's just kind of how the market works. If we take a look at Ethereum, good but not as good, right? We are still seeing Ethereum be the dog of the crypto market. Did the same thing, nice little bear trap where we undercut this zone right here and then we started to push higher, we started to grind higher. I'm kind of watching this trend line, just like this, just to see if we end up breaking that trend line, might be uh, ready to go for Ethereum, but still you can't, you can't say anything about the relative weakness other than it's not alt season yet. Uh, if this starts to break out, then we could potentially see alt season start to start to pick up a little bit. Uh, when we look at what's happening today, MSOS up 4% is kind of interesting in this zone right here. And I am still watching just the only crypto I've really got on watch list. I'm going to do some scanning this weekend, but is mana here with this potential cup and handle. If we go back on the weekly chart, this zone at 75, 80 cents has been brick wall. So at 56 now, if we can get up and through there, and you know, that could be great a high of six bucks, if we end up taking a shot at that, a lot of these other cryptos are taking a shot at highs. Who knows with mana, but mega, mega clear support and resistance zone right here. That's really all I'm watching. That's either going to break in a big way, or it's just going to uh, consolidate here forever. So I'm just got, I've got some orders and I've got some watch lists in the kind of 85 cent to 90 cent area. If we start to blow through, I want to get involved. If we do an anchored view app from this kind of major all time high, that's sitting all the way up at 178. So if we got there, that's almost a double, uh, over a double from, from that price. That'd be great. And then through that anchored view app from all time highs and then who knows on this particular name. It's the only real crypto name that I've got on watch right now because Bitcoin is just still range bound. Ethereum is still range bound. So I want to look for other things that I think just have more of an explosive uh, bent if they go. Let's take a look at the SPY here this week. More bear traps. Talked about, hey, this is going to be the bear trap lesson. This is going to be the bear trap week and this same kind of thing. I was talking about 580 on the SPY. I've been talking about 580 on the SPY now for a long period of time. In Stats Edge Pro, 
in that chat room that we have there. Same thing. I've been saying, listen, if as long as we're above 580 on the SPY, I'm going to be totally listening to the algos and just buying stocks, buying stocks, buying stocks. I can give you some examples of names that we bought this week that were doing great. But that's that's the sole focus. That's the entire focus is I just want to buy names as long as we are holding above this 580. We undercut it. I, you know, looked like, okay, maybe I got to back off for a little bit here. But then we rallied the day, closed strong at uh 583.50 and then just straight up in a straight line from there. So the bears that got, same as I said with Bitcoin, the bears that got trapped in, they had to reverse bulls that got stopped out. They had to get back in as well. I've seen this in a lot of this as well. Now, again, going back to what we saw here, WGMI block, uh, consumer con or home construction, again, which makes sense with what's going on, uh, home builders rates, rate sensitive things are doing great and KWeb up 7%. So we want to take a look at that as well. But really, we're seeing a lot of big tech names. Arc, for example, actually looks good. And this is the first time I've probably said that in a long time. If you zoom out on Arc, pretty clear level here at the kind of $52 area, we broke that and then we've just been consolidating sideways here on Arc, kind of looking like the overall market here as well. But if we can break this to the upside on Arc, I don't know. Is this going to, am I actually going to buy some ARC? I don't know. But, right, we avoided it from 150 uh, all the way down to 30 bucks when it was just crashing here. This looks potentially like a stage one accumulation, maybe breaking into a stage two uptrend. So that's something I definitely want to watch there on ARC. And then again, more of the same. So XLY is our consumer discretionary. That is breaking out here to new highs. If we just do this area right here. Right, consumer discretionary breaking out to new highs. Uh, XLK, which is technology, did okay today, but or okay this week, but a little bit under performance. Oil that held the breakout. We were looking for this zone right here after we had this triangle breakout. Oil's holding. It's kind of an everything rally, and it gets hard to talk about things when you have an everything rally, but it's something that you really want to look at. Now, the main focus I wanted to do for the equities for you guys is to take a look and kind of study and focus right here on the SPY, and then take a look at RSP. Now, RSP just up. It didn't have that red day. It didn't really have any red day. We're up now five days in a row on RSP after doing that undercut and rally. So RSP is the equal weighted S&P 500. So the S&P 500, very tech heavy. It's like 30% of the index is tech. RSP, not so much. This is kind of saying, what is the average large cap stock doing? It's doing okay. So this is not a Nvidia, Tesla is rallying and everything else is falling apart. In fact, right, we have Apple weighing us down right now and everything else doing doing pretty well. Looking down the cap scale again a little bit in the IWM, underperforming, but it's just kind of what it does. IWM underperforms. However, still looking pretty strong. Still had that bear trap where it rocketed up to. Uh, MDY, mid caps, these are the guys right in the middle. These are doing well. So this is the rare everything rally. Again, this chart right here, this this heat map, this is every in the, the week to date change. So I'm recording this 20 minutes before the close. And this is what happened all week. Everything was up. So this is one of those moments that the only thing that I can really say to do is to look at things that you are trading that are not up. If you own anything, and it hasn't participated at all in this week's rally, it got no bounce. It got no love at all in this week's rally. It's probably a bad stock. It might be a stock that you want to avoid. Not investment advice. That's just kind of how I look at it, that I want to make sure that I'm getting involved in names that are not even relatively strong, is it even the words. But again, if they are not participating at all, then we want to get out. Now, I was talking about some of the uh, names that we bought this week that were looking fantastic. Uh, we got a couple pullbacks on that bad day, right? Anytime you see this purple line, this is the alert that would have been sent out via our little Discord bot there. Right? This is what we were looking for. So Shark Ninja, of all things, we had a little laugh in the room. There's a blender company it was doing fantastic. But nice little breakout last week. Pull back this week, got right to our price of kind of 105, and then a nice little bounce train. So something like VST, that suffered a little bit of bad news this week, but still, right, hit our little line. We're still up on it a little bit. I'm more likely to kill this kind of thing into the close. The trend following names did amazing. KTOS broke out on Monday, never looked back. Uh, what was the other one? ULCC right? A little bit of a pullback. 
that happened as well. Um, we've got a lot of the airlines, although it didn't do as good as we thought, still did okay. So that's the kind of stuff that we were doing here is just trying to look for names that were breaking out and continuing. Uh, like Kinder Morgan was fantastic, broke out this week, and again, just didn't look back. So again, one of those things that as I'm going through this list, I'm kind of trying to paint to you what I just said. So KMI, I'm definitely keeping. Um, KTOS, I'm definitely keeping. Some of these names as well, this uh, UAL, I'm supposed to sell this on Monday, but you know, Tuesday, obviously, with the market open. So these are the things that I'm going to keep until that time where I'm supposed to sell them, uh, laid out by the algorithm, right? Every algorithm has its own trading plan around it, and I specify which one comes from each algo. But something like VST, right, we've got some lagging going on here. This was kind of the best Look at this absolute monster, $12 to 170. This has been an amazing trade for a long time, but a little bit of underperformance. So this is more one that I'm going to be more interested in potentially cutting going into the end of the day and the end of the week. So I hope that makes sense for the, I do it for a couple of reasons. So one, I highly recommend listening to the new market wizards. No, the unknown market wizards. That's the new one that just came out a couple of years ago. And there's a, a section there from Peter Brandt, who's been trading for a very long period of time. And he just has a mantra that anything that's red on Fridays, he just kills. And he, is, he has the whole weekend to think about it. If he still wants the trade on Monday, he can just buy it back. The odds of it doing something crazy and gapping up huge in that period of time is relatively low. So again, why not just sell it on Friday, buy it back on Monday? I do kind of the same thing, but on really good, green weeks on a really green even days if the whole market is ripping like it has been this week that i've showed you guys and your stuff hasn't moved higher at all there means there's some amount of selling that's going on or at least when these hedge funds are looking at what to buy they're not buying your name it doesn't mean it can't work in the future right nothing is for sure just something to think about right if kind of kill some laggers and then potentially move on from there so Again, sets as pro members uh, Saturday or Sunday, you'll end up getting that letter as soon as I can put it out. Sometimes the data takes a long time for the systems to uh, to calculate, but sometime this weekend, you'll definitely get an email going on out there. I appreciate you all for coming by. And until I talk to you next week, again, Monday's closed. Get away from the screen.